Hello and welcome to Jessie Bear Book Club. Today we are talking about one of my favourite A Song of Ice and Fire characters, Sansa Stark. During my sixth read-through of the books, some really interesting stuff in Sansa's chapters started to stand out to me, and that was that there was a lot of foreshadowing about falling or jumping from a great height to commit suicide, and I thought this topic deserved a deeper dive and a little bit more attention, so here we go. Of course, the most obvious piece of foreshadowing here is Sansa with Liza and the Moon Door, but I want to look at some of the other factors. The foreshadowing first became apparent to me in Sansa's last chapter in A Game of Thrones. It is full of references to falling or being pushed that are then mirrored when Sansa is in the area with Liza who's threatening to push her through the moon door. Sansa really wants to push Joffrey off the parapet after he makes her look at her father's head on a spike. She seriously considers grabbing him and jumping, even if it is only for a few seconds. There is also Sansa's obsession with Sir Ilian Payne to consider. It could be put down to the fact that he is the man who executed her father, or it could have a more sinister meaning, where Sansa is longing for the hell she is living to be over. In A Clash of Kings, before Sansa gets her first period, she nearly falls off a tower in the Red Keep, but the Hound saves her. There was so much foreshadowing in this chapter for the moon door scene. I cannot believe George R. R. Martin would only use this imagery once. I think he is planning to use it again at some other point, maybe at the end of Sansa's story. It is also very interesting that at the end of the Hound and Sansa's conversation, the Hound says, Fly away, little bird, I am sick of you peeping at me. Does he mean fly away or fall away? If you are jumping, doesn't it amount to the same thing in the end? Sweet Robin certainly thinks so, and he is Sansa's first cousin. Sansa is also known as Elaine Stone, meaning she has metaphorically killed off Sansa Stark. I also think it is very funny that her new name is Elaine Stone because Elaine is a girl's name of Arabic origin, which means rock princess. And doesn't the name Elaine sound a lot like Alyssa, which brings to mind Alyssa's tears? And the meaning of the name Alyssa is God is a promise. And doesn't God promise eternal peace for us all? Alyssa's life and Sansa's life mirror each other in grief. According to legend, Alyssa saw her husband, her brother, and her children killed in front of her, but she never shed a tear, and as a consequence, after her own death, the gods determined that she would not know rest until her tears reached the Vale of Erin below her, where all those she had loved were buried, and after Ned's execution, Sansa tries very hard never to cry in public. I like to think that the waterfall of Alyssa's tears falls from the spot where from Alyssa threw herself in her silent sorrow. But maybe I'm just an old romantic. There is also the small fact that the Tullys seem to be touched by madness due to their went blood. The went women in particular seem to be batshit crazy, and isn't it kind of funny that the sigil of House Went is a giant bat? Could George R. R. Martin be playing some sort of weird joke with his out-of-use sigil? Menissa Went was the mother of Catelyn, Liza, and Edmure Tully, and we know virtually nothing about her. Was she spontaneous and reckless like Catelyn, seizing Tyrion and letting the Kingslayer loose? Was she obsessive and needy like Liza? Or power-hungry, insecure, and jealous like Edmure? I honestly would really like to know. None of the Tullys lack intelligence. They simply lack impulse control, and you can see this in their children as well. Rob Stark is quick to violence. He threatens Yorin when Yorin tells him Benjamin Stark is dead, and he welcomes Tyrion with naked steel in his lap. He also takes Lord Karstark's head. 
Are these actions youth or a touch of something else? Arya, Rickon and Sweet Robin are all quick to violence. And Sansa and Bran don't think things the whole way through before acting on their desires. As always, this theory could be complete tinfoil and we all have to wait for Winds of Winter to come out, but I would not be surprised if after a crushing defeat or her platonic husband Tyrion is executed, Sansa decides enough is enough and does something drastic. I would really hate to see Sansa's story end like this, but I would not be surprised if it did. Not all princesses get their happy endings, especially in A Song of Ice and Fire. Be sure to check out my other A Song of Ice and Fire videos on this channel. I have an entire playlist of my theories. I also have some really good A Song of Ice and Fire and wildcard comparison videos for you to check out. Until next time, remember to like, comment and subscribe. Bye!